1.5 and you purchased it for how much? 400,000. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How long after you joined the Action Family did you buy the, the 12 unit? Um, Like a few months after we purchased the, the, the building, yeah. Since then, I've been able to, I joined your community two years ago. I learned about what private lending. I learned about mortgages. I have so much knowledge and made great connections in the group. <music> Welcome to the Investor Melodate Woman of Action Show. My guest today is Abigail Ababio, and we'll be talking about how she and her husband purchased a 12 unit within months of joining the Action Family. Most importantly, we're going to be going into the details about the importance of stabilizing your portfolio. And if you don't know who I am yet, I'm Mel with Investor Mel Dave, and we specialize in buying properties using creative financing and no joint venture partners. We've purchased over 264 units in five countries Canada, US, Mexico, Dominican Republic, and Costa Rica. And if you love real investing and you're not following my channel yet make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell because Dave and I release a brand new video every single week now let's get started Abigail Babio, thank you so much for being on the woman of action show welcome to our channel thank you Mel and Dave for inviting me to your podcast today yeah. You know what? We have met. We're just talking about this shortly before we started recording here. And we met, was it what, a year or two ago now? It's been two years already. Oh, time flies. And I remember you. The first thing you said to Mel, do you remember me? I'm like, absolutely, because you had shared with me an amazing success story back then. And I did not know you were taking all this action and getting all these results. So I'm so excited that you're here. I had asked you back then, I said, get uncomfortable, get on social media, come on my show. Um, and here we are two years later, you're getting outside your comfort zone. You're doing this. So congratulations on being here. Uh, so great to see you again. Thank you. Great, great. So please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. So hi everyone. So my name is Abigail Ababio. I'm a social worker by profession. And I mean, my whole career has been centered around helping people. So it's not a, a far leap to jump into real estate. So when I was going to grad school, I decided in 2008 to purchase my first property. So that's where my journey started prior to joining your action family. So I purchased a home and I rented it out to students at the time. I had no idea about real estate investing. I didn't know strategies. I didn't know about private lending. I didn't know about mortgages. I was really young at the time. I just wanted to buy a home while I was in university. I love it. Okay. So you knew that somehow you didn't know how, but this somehow this would help you be successful. Were you following anybody in real estate industry or you just, you just knew that real estate, you could create some additional income? You know, too. at the time I didn't even know about income and cash flow. I knew absolutely nothing. And if you remember in 2008, the market was crashing at the yes. time. People were literally losing homes, doing all of that. But what had happened with me was I'm, I went to a women's show. I was working out in a gym and I met a woman. She's like, I'm going to a women's show this weekend. Do you want to come and help out? I said, yeah, sure. And I met a realtor there and that's how my ball started started rolling. And that same time I went to my bank at the time and they said, do you want to buy a house with zero money down? And I looked at them. I was like, how is that possible? Let me think about it. And I used to go weekly to save money. So I said, so the following week when I went, I said, I'm interested. How do I get started? It's like, I'll give you a realtor. We'll give, provide the financing and the rest they say is history. And that's that's how I was introduced to the whole concept of real estate. Okay, I love it. Okay, so you got interested, you decided to get outside your comfort zone, go for it. Um, how did you do this first no money down? Well, what happened was I was a student at the time, so I had a student loan. Ah, so that money okay. paid for the lawyer fees and the closing fees, and that's all I needed at the time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Right. Two thousand. Yeah. These didn't need the large deposits that we need now. It's a completely different uh, strategy now because now we need 20 to 25% down. It used to definitely be a lot uh, lower than that. Okay. Awesome. And where have you been? So fast forward years later, I know that you've taken some massive action. I'd love to hear about uh, your journey and, and how you made this happen. So I bought a, a home at the time in 2008 and I mean, I was just by myself. I didn't really need a home. I was living with my parents. I bought a home. I convinced my brother to come and join me. So we had two rooms used and then we still had three rooms left that we, we didn't really have use for. So I started getting into student rental where I, 
I started posting ads on Kijiji or Facebook market. I don't even remember where. And I found international students that were coming to, I, at the time I was living in Ottawa, they were coming to Ottawa for schools and I was able to charge them rent and provide housing for them while they were in school. So that's how I started. But since then, I've been able to, I joined your community two years ago. I learned about what private lending. I learned about mortgages. I, I have so much knowledge and made great connections in the group. And I've been able to connect with a lot of the members in that group, like a realtor, mortgage brokers, appraisers, like seems like everyone you would need to make a successful transaction can be found in that group if you're able to network with them. I love that. Well, your network is your net worth, right? And and being surrounded with people who are all committed to this, right? Because it's only committed. There's a fee, of course, who would join the action family to be part of this community. You have to to pay to learn and and, and play and all those things. And exactly, people in part of the community are there uh, to help you and and, and support you um, as well. So okay, so two years ago, you joined the action family. Uh, you were able to make some great connections, expand on your learning. What has happened since? So since then, I bought a 12 unit in Timmins, Ontario, and I've been sort of renovating and getting that cash flow positive since then. I mean, it didn't come without its challenges, right? It's far up north. I don't know if the, before I even joined your group, my if you were remember my husband and I showed up to your office unannounced just because he's like we have to make sure these people are real and what they're talking about is real so at that time he was um applying for a position in northern ontario so we would drive sometimes we would fly but this time we drove and we decided we'll stop in your office to make check you and dave out to make sure you're real and everything you're talking about is legit so we did that we met you and then the same night when we got to the hotel we're like we're ready let's do this let's and that's do how this. we joined yeah oh that's so awesome I do remember that uh isn't it funny how exactly you just want to make sure do your due diligence love it um had a chance to, to have a, a, a nice uh, I think a little tour of our office at the yeah. same time I remember walking you through and uh and here you are uh 12 unit um already and uh, tell me tell me about that building how is that coming along yeah, so we've been renovating the building and uh, working with contractors. And I mean, working with contractors has its own challenges, but just navigating the communication, working with city permits, working with lawyers, and just it's been challenging, but it's been a great learning for us too, just how to communicate effectively. So the other person that you're talking to understands some of what you're trying to communicate, your challenges, maybe they have a different idea of what the output should be. And then, I mean, it's your building at the end of the day. So you have to take ownership of what you want, what you don't want, and how do you communicate to them so they understand your wishes for the building because I have a different vision than what the contractor might have oh have you thought about Airbnb but for me truly it's like maybe it's my social work background but being in real estate is about impact in lives and how can I serve people in the communities that I choose to acquire buildings in so really I, I want to provide long-term housing I know some people might not like that strategy but that's where I feel like making an impact is a it's very important to me. And that's where I, we choose to in, invest in Ottawa, the capital city, and also in Timmins, Ontario, where we currently are residing with our family. Okay, so now you're back in Timmins right now. I am. So okay. he, my husband has left the job here and then we relocated here in Northern Ontario. Oh, good for you. Well, I'm a Northern Ontario girl, so I, so I, I gotcha, I gotcha. And you said you're investing in Ottawa as well? I am. So that's where I started investing in 2008. I, we have uh, a couple of properties there and we're also doing a 12 unit renovation right now in Timmins, Ontario. Okay. I love that. So 12 units. Um, okay. So that's a fairly big jump, right? I mean, you are, I'll use the word courageous uh, more than I am to go to a 12 unit right away. Cause I kept buying the smaller ones at first, a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex. And then after a while I, I, I was able to, to do that. What made you decide to go from smaller units to boom jumping in a fairly you know some some people would consider this fairly it's not humongous but it's still 12 12 units how was that shift yeah so for us what happened was the market in ottawa when we started investing it was fairly affordable at the time where you can purchase a unit i mean we've done the duplex conversion we've done a couple of that and we have a um, single family home so we knew how to renovate and do a big lift so we we're very comfortable with that but then since the market shifted and the interest rate and all of that it started 
made us jump outside of our comfort zone and shift our mindset into how what is the best use for all our properties right because we have to cash flow and without the cash flow there's no business at the end of the day so we started consulting with um architects and engineers and how do we what is the maximum use for our building so like for example one of our units in ottawa when we started we just duplexed it out because we were happy just going through all those process but then later on we started to explore what's the best use by contacting architects and all that and they told us we can develop it into a six unit so that's something for the along the line while we have it into two units we're getting some cash coming in and at later when we're comfortable and we're ready we're going to start infilling that property into a six to eight units depending on the zone and changes that is happening right now I mean, yes, it's a big jump to go from smaller multifamilies into 12 unit, but it's all about your mindset and just overcoming your fears. I had to work. I mean, I'm a counselor and a mindset coach, but I had to overcome my own limited beliefs that, you know, if I believe anything is possible, it is. It's just a matter of collaborating with the right people to help you along the way. And it, it truly is. I'm a testament that it is possible to have a change in mindset and be able to do bigger deals with the right team support around you. I love it. And mindset is huge, right? Fear will always be there. Um, and having growth is possible. But you're doing a couple of things that I love here. Um, because Dave and I, were all about growth as well. Uh, as you know, we love buying. But most importantly, we like making sure that we restabilize our portfolio. That's an important part. And sometimes real estate investors, we get so excited because we see these opportunities and we see these deals and we buy 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 but what some people don't do is stop and stabilize their portfolio and if you actually look at and study the journey of dave and i that's exactly what happened yes we've had huge growth throughout you know, about 12 and 12 but then we're pretty quiet for a while that about 110 then we're quiet for a while because what's important is number one we use opm other people's money so you have to make sure you're paying back that money and you have to do so by restabilizing uh, your assets, making sure you're getting the lift, making sure your tenants are well taken care of, that you're staying with the regulations, that your books are up to date. There's a lot of moving parts that need to happen. So it's not just a buy, buy, buy. Mm -hmm. And I love exactly what you're doing right now. You you did go from you know smaller to boom, and you're working on another big project as well. And now you're focusing on stabilizing a little bit. And I absolutely love that because to me, that's a sign of success. There's absolutely nothing wrong with not that you're stopping, but pausing, making sure everything is moving along uh, well strategically. So that way, whenever you're ready again, then you can continue to to do this as well. Is that part of your strategy? That's absolutely it. Like without stabilizing your units, you can only learn from looking back, right? So you have to take the time. And like when you're in the moment, sometimes you miss a few things. But when you look back, you're able to correct some of those stuff. Am I putting in the right tenants? Am I making sure that my rent is market rent? Like, how am I able to get the right contractors? Is all these renovations going well? And I think for us, what really kind of propelled our uh, success is we had a single family home that appraised for almost double the, the property value. So we had a lot of equity. And at the time, we didn't know what to do with that. And with education, we were able to figure out a few different possible things to do with some of our equity that we had. Like we learned about private lending. We learned about just how to best make use of our current portfolio and leverage it to the best of our that it's beneficial to us. And we're also about like long-term growth too, right? We have kids and we want to be able to leave them a legacy. This partly started when my head, I used to love to travel a lot. So at the time I had just from Ottawa to Timmins is an eight hour drive. I spent a lot of time in the car with my husband at the time. So I was plan at the time planning my, my next trip. I had just come back from, um, being in the Maldives and I'm like, how can I even go to a nicer vacation the next time and he kept asking me Abigail are you all about what legacy would you leave for your kids after all this travel do you want to travel all the countries in the world I said well not really I just want to travel and he's like you have to start thinking about legacy so then I went back to what I'm really passionate about and at the time and it's always been since 2008 real estate and my grandmother also died around the same time when I had in I had started um inquiring about your program and I had to go back to Ghana for her funeral so when he really said that something it, it really resonated with me right about leaving a legacy and what impact would you want to leave and all of that so I started thinking about it and I said I'm ready for this big shift in my life and I really want to 
hone in on learning more about real estate and how do you make this a successful business and not just one or two where it's like, oh, I'll just buy a real estate here and there, but turn it into a profitable business. Oh, and I'm so sorry to hear about your your grandmother. Um, I love though how you took that as a you know almost a, a reason to to really think about what you want for for your life for for your little ones. How old are your little ones now? Yeah, so I have twin boys. They're uh, they're turning ten this year. Actually, oh <laughs> my goodness, already! Wow, yeah, that's a fun age. Right. Yeah. And you're, you're turning into to that as well. OK, so let's talk about um, the purchase. Now, I know you said you had money from another property. That's a great strategy. Sometimes we might use some of the funds. To put, is that what you decided? Did you use OPM? What did that look like for, for funding and renovations? Yeah, so I uh, used the funds from our, our uh, home that we had a large equity in to purchase the building. And then I uh, found a private lender to help for a first mortgage for the renovation. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's great. Perfect. So now you're in the middle of doing that. And do you have a certain predicted number that you're looking to uh, make when it comes to refinancing time? Is it still in the works? What does that look like? No, along the way, I've got like appraisal to appraise after repair value. And currently, as it came in last week, it'll come in about 1.5. So we're really excited for to get rewarded for all our hard work. 1.5 and you purchased it for how much? Four hundred thousand. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Okay, you purchased it for four hundred. That's correct. And you are have an appraisal of one point five. Yes. And you'll get eighty percent loan to value from from that likely, right? As part of your refinance. Yeah. Um. And did you put a lot of money into it? I obviously you had to put some money into it. Yeah. So we're doing a substantial renovation to the building just because the lift is there to do, and we plan to keep it long term. So we've updated the plumbing, the electrical, and just making the unit. Like we want people who reside in our home to take pride that that's their home, right? As a mental health counselor, I correlate a positive home with positive mental health and the two working together. So I take pride in all of our renovations and making sure that we work with the city, the contractors to get the best possible outcome for our renovations. Wow. Well, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, that's over a million dollars minus the renovations, of course, costs that you had to, to put in it, but that's, I mean, that's, that's huge in a matter of two, because how long after you joined the action family, did you buy the, the 12th unit? Um, like a few months after we purchased the, the, the building, yes. So within a matter of less than two years, that's a huge amount of money um, that most of us never, ever make working nonstop uh, hours during the week, right? And and that's the power of real estate investing when done correctly, when working with the right people. And I love that you said, yeah, it does come with some work. I mean, that's that's a reality. Um, it comes with some, some work, of course, uh, but um, I love that. So I'm sure you can't wait for that refinance to, uh, to come in whenever you're 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 able to to do that refinance. Yes, yes. It's but, it's been a quite a journey. Like I learned a lot through this process, like contacting cities, applying for section three five seven and like contacting lawyers to assist you with that. Just how do you mitigate some of the risks involved in like renovation? There's all like every time I've renovated anything, there's always delays. How do you having the right timelines and just communicating with your contractors and without like weekly meetings and being here in Timmins has really, really helped just having a good pulse on the renovation. I love that. Okay. And I guess what are your intentions? So once this asset is stabilized, because you're doing the right things, right? You want to make sure the asset is stabilized, right? You never want to keep buying. And when there's things in the air, you want to make sure that, you know, things get rectified and back and where they should be and cash flowing positive and all those kind of things, of course. Um, but what are your next intentions once you you get that refinance? Are you continue to to purchase are you taking a break what does that look like for you taking a break no <laughs> remember how i had said that we started exploring our our reevaluating our portfolio and we can turn one of the units in ottawa into a six to eight unit yeah so that would be our next go-to project great. so within our portfolio we're just trying to get all to this best and highest use there's so much potential. I love real estate. Dave and I were literally just talking about real estate and we're going away on holiday soon. We're going to go at a conference at the same time. And and uh, because we just love it. I love always expanding and learning and, and doing these things because there's always different ways 
that you can grow your portfolio, whether it's even looking at your own portfolio. Okay, what else can I do with it? Or going to different areas or uh, just doing the things that, that you love. I love how you're very dedicated as well to providing a safe uh, home um, as well. It's uh, the law of attraction, right? What you put out, you'll, you'll continue to uh, to get back uh, as well. So that's uh, that's fantastic. What's been your, your biggest, um, I guess, uh, learning through this whole renovations? Because it sounds like you did quite a bit, right? When you have to, to get the city involved, uh, which I encourage at any time, you always, of course, follow regulation. But it sounds like you've had a lot of, of, of learning. What was your, your biggest uh, learning curve? Yeah, just um, with the contractors, even though you have timelines and everything, just be prepared and flexible for change, right? You can be have a, a fixed mindset where every little change you're so worried about, you have to be able to like have these meetings with city officials and be confident and present what you're working on. And like, how do you navigate these challenges together as a team to when we first started, the renovation should have been a much shorter time, but we didn't know that we would run into like a waterline issue that is going to ex add extra time to our project. So, but then just being flexible and working with the right people has really, really helped for us. I like that being flexible because sometimes you don't even realize and there's a bump in the road, right? Life, real estate investing is, is a journey and sometimes certain things do happen. You think you might have a tenant forever and they move out or you think they'll move out and they don't or, you know, whatever scenario it is. A renovation sometimes can cost more than you thought or, you know, so you always have to, to be prepared, be prepared and have the right people around you, your strong network where they can go, hey, been there done that you know this is what i would do in this kind of situation for us building the right team and support around it has been crucial to the success of our real estate expansion for sure i bet i bet i love it love it well let's dive right into the the woman of action uh questions that i have here for you question number one abigail what advice would you give your younger self well i started investing really young so i <laughs> my first real estate so don't let fear hold you back get the right team around you and they will support you be open and have the right mindset for it. when challenging things come around embrace it right and get the right people for your support and they'll be able to support you for sure so how do we do that like how do we feel like okay i know what you, i hear you i, I don't want to let fear stop me but fear stopping me, what do I do? Like, how did you do that? How did you not let the fear stop you? For me, like I'm a social worker and a mindset coach by stuff, but even me, I had to let go of my limited belief. Like I started that the only thing I can do is two units. Look at me now with 12. I had to work on my own limited beliefs that I can do more and I'm capable of being and doing those things. Yes, me, I'm capable of doing that. And I believed it and I took actions towards that. I love that. That's fantastic. Well, it's very well deserved. Um, question number two, what's your number one tip you would give to someone who wants to get started in real estate investing? I would definitely say get the right team, so be surrounded by the right team and get your own education. Like you have to know what you're doing and not over rely on other people to lead you the right way. Their vision might not be your goals for yourself. You have to know what you want. So by getting education, they'll teach you the different strategies. Don't be pulled by 10 different ways. Know what you want. And in the group, there's so many people doing different strategies. And if you know what strategies you want to do, contact them. I find that everyone is in the group is willing to help you if you reach out to them. Like when I started, I had no idea about private lending. And I contacted maybe close to 10 people and they were all willing to tell me how they structure their deals, how they find people. Like I learned so much from people who've already done what I'm trying to do just from the group itself. Again, the power of your network, right? Being able to, and what's neat about it, it's this compound effect. So yes, you know, you'll learn it from, from David and I inside the program, but it's this other part of it where everybody's doing it, of course, their own way based on, you know, what they want and where they're investing and what kind of projects they're working on. And then you can tailor it based on, okay, I really like this part of it. And this one from this person I love, and oh, I love this. And then you can customize it. And again, it's this domino effect that happens, right? Because you learn from this person and this person, this person, this person. 
um, which is, of course, so, so powerful. Abigail, people are going to want to uh, follow you along your journey as you continue to work on all these exciting projects strategically, which is the most important part. Uh, how can people follow you or reach out to you? Yeah, so just type my name in Facebook, Abigail Ababio. You can easily find me there also on LinkedIn. We also have a website, uh, www.aquabahome.ca. Aquaba in my language means welcome. So welcomehome.ca. Oh, great. Great, great. You say your language and you mentioned your other country. Where are you from? Ghana. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And were you were you born in Canada or you were born there? No, I was born in Ghana. You I were really young. Yes. Oh, good. Very neat. Very neat. I love how diversified the Action Family program is. We have people from all over the world inside our program. Um, and if people like Abigail can do it, can push through the fear, uh, you definitely can as well. So Abigail, thank you so much um, for getting outside your comfort zone a little bit today. Coming on my show, we finally get to talk about this huge project. And I, it's exciting because now we I get to see how far you've come um, and now you're close to that refinancing stage which is of course uh, very rewarding and I can't wait to hear about your future projects thank you so much for having me on today you're welcome okay talk to you soon thank you Abigail, thank you so much for being on my show and discussing the importance of stabilizing your portfolio. Congratulations on this huge profit that you're going to be making. And if you want to learn more about the Action Family Mentoring Program, where we show you how to grow your portfolio using OPM, fill out the form in my bio and I'll reach out with more information. Abigail was so amazing with her no excuses mindset. And if you want to meet other amazing women, make sure to check out this next video. I'm Investor Mel and I'll see you there.